Hey, what's up, Daily Dosers? My name is Austin Payne. I'm one of the high school pastors on the Vista campus, and today I'm excited to dive into Isaiah chapter 6. And one of those passages for me in the Old Testament that I've heard it, or no matter how many times I've heard it, I continually come back and I'm kind of blown away by the perspective that God grants Isaiah in this season. And Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 reads this way It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted and seated on a throne. And it's important that Isaiah adds in the year that King Uzziah died. And in other parts in scripture, in 2 Chronicles and in 1 Kings, we actually get to take a deep dive into this King Uzziah's life. That he was, we read that he's 16 years old when he takes over the throne of Israel. And he has this 52 year long reign where he reigns and it's it's a prosperous reign. He's a, a king that has, has built a ton. He's a king that's provided a bunch of jobs. He's a king that's created economic stability and he's gone to battle on behalf of his people and, and he was a good king for the most part. And his death is a tragic one. And, and so the people of Israel, they're in a season of mourning. They're in a season of kind of anxiety of what's going to happen next. And what's going to happen now that Uzziah, this 52-year king, as we look back, we were coming out of this season where there was a lot of stability. And we knew what it looked like. And now moving forward, we're, we're kind of freaked out about what's next. And Isaiah chapter 6 beautifully paints this picture of it, when in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the anxiousness, in the middle of this uncertainty, he says, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were these seraphim, these, these angelic creatures with these six wings, with two wings in humility, they cover their feet. With two wings out of this reverence, they cover their eyes. And in Exodus chapter 33, it says that no one will gaze upon the face of the Lord and live. And so these angels in reverence and humility are covering their feet and their eyes. And then with two, they're flying in service, chanting over and over and over again, holy, holy, holy. And three times in scripture, three times in the Hebrew language would have been this exclamation point saying no one is holier than God. No one is more set apart than him. No one is more gracious than him. No one is more loving than him. No one is more fill in the blank on the character of God. And, and all day long, the highest of God's beings are chanting that he is the king on the throne. And I love this gracious perspective that God grants Isaiah in the middle of chaos, in the middle of anxiousness going, I understand that your king has been displaced. I understand that after these 52 years, this seems massive. And yet I'm not a God sitting on a throne. I am the God sitting on the throne, that I am who I am. I always have been, I always will be. And it's almost as if Isaiah with these horse blinders on, you know, in the midst of the moment, it, it is a big deal. It's not that God says, it, don't worry about the moment right here, right now. Like, don't lose the forest for the trees. He cares about the details. And yet in the midst of the details, graciously reminds Isaiah, I'm the king. I sit on the throne. My train fills the entire temple. It is, it's this sign of importance. These heavenly beings, that the beings, the, the angels themselves all throughout scripture, they say, don't be afraid because humans gazing upon angels fall flat on their face. And yet the God sitting on the throne, holy, 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 reminds Isaiah, I know what's going to happen and I am in charge. I am the God on the throne. Remember who I am today and let that be the perspective in which we enter into. Thanks, Daily Dosers. We'll see you tomorrow.